Eli with the Evolve Academy. In this video, I want to cover the Analog Way Live Premiere Simulator and using this to test box configurations for troubleshooting and project management purposes. Here you can see we're working off version 4.3.9. I've got a blank simulator. I'm going to start by importing a session file. And this is a previously built file that I made for testing things with a customer. And you can see it's called training. I have a subtitle of version two. Here is the box configuration. Let's save and launch this. And I'll walk you through what's built in this simulator. There's two import and export function I wanna talk about. There's the simulator, import and export session files. These store the simulator session, including the entire box inside of it. So the session file is going to include the configuration file of the unit. Once you're on a live unit like we have here, we can also save and load our box configuration file. Now the configuration file doesn't include the simulator information. But what you can do with the configuration is port this from one box to the next. So let me show you this RS1 we have built. We have a couple screens, some auxes that are labeled as our stage left, stage right, DSMs. We have some presets. Now I was working through this and what we needed to do from here is we needed to add some cut and fill layers. But as you can see, we have no more layers left available in this box. So unless we do split layers or maybe DAAR screens, we don't have any resources. And we really need to leave this configuration as is, but add more resources. But what I don't want to have to do is rebuild the entire show on another simulator. So what we're going to do is we're going to export this configuration. One of the powerful things of exporting a configuration is that you can filter it. For example, I could export only the image library if I have a large amount of images, or if I spend a lot of time working with my edit library and custom formats, I could also just export those and then import them into the new machine without overriding the other parameters. For this box, we're exporting everything. It's going to download to our local control machine. And then from here, what we want to do is we need a larger Aqualung an RS2 or an RS4. So I'm going to create an RS4. And one thing you want to do is, if you can, make sure you have essentially the same card configurations. I've got HDMIs on the top row, DisplayPort 12G HDMI. So this becomes DisplayPort, this becomes 12G. I know I'm going to have some 12G but I can make it these bottom two cards and it won't affect the top two cards at all. Unless you want those to be 12 GCI, you can do that. You can change the cards, yet keep your screens configured appropriately as well. This will be the easiest way for me to port this stuff over. So I'm going to save this configuration and start it as a session. Here we've loaded into that RS4, and as you can see, it's a blank box. We don't have any screens configured, no inputs, nothing in our image library. So we're going to load that RS1 configuration onto this machine. Once again, we could filter and choose the specific parameters that we want to load without overriding the other parameters. This will trigger a quasi-factory reset, so it can take a couple minutes for the system to apply this configuration. All right, the RS1 configuration has been loaded onto the RS4, and the system has detected a new output configuration. So the options it's giving us are to close this dialog and just stick with everything exactly as imported which is what I'm gonna do. We could save the current configuration. 
which is the one that is in the simulator now, which was a blank configuration. So we don't want to do that. And then there's a renumber all, which will trigger another sort of reset of the box. But this will go through and renumber all of the outputs. It could be a good option if you have a very dramatic change, but there's more of a chance your outputs won't be mapped correctly to your screens. You can do this. Just make sure you go and check your pre-config and go through it thoroughly and ensure your mappings are correct. And now, as you can see, I've got all of my screens properly labeled. We've got our presets ready to go. My images stored. My image library was imported correctly. And on our screens, we now have the ability to upgrade these layers to cut and fills. So now on the larger box, we have the resources available and we didn't have to recreate the show. I use the setup prolifically in testing different setups and different scenarios on different pieces of gear. And it allows me to build the core of their show and then port it to different boxes and do different versions of that simulator file. One thing to note is these are relatively small files, right? The box configurations only three megabytes and the simulation file is 20 megabytes, making these very emailable to another technician for troubleshooting purposes. The one thing that can make these files get larger and larger is having a large image library. This is what contributes most of the size to these files. There you have it, a quick explanation and usage of the different ways to utilize the Analog Way Live Premiere Simulators. Thanks for watching.